Hi, my name is Dr. Tishan. In this video, we're going to find some volumes of irregular shapes, and we're going to be using the disk washer method that you would learn in a calculus class. So here are some formulas over here. We're going to do a couple of examples so you can see how you put them to practice, and we'll be utilizing the Texas Instrument TI-89 graphing calculator to help us with graphs and numeric integration. So disk method and our washer method are the methods we're going to talk about here. So First of all, we're going to sketch the curve. We need to get a good sketch of what these functions look like. Um, and then when you, you're going to use an axis of revolution, you're going to revolve around um, an axis. Okay, We're going to use horizontal axes today. And so when you do revolve around a horizontal axis, we're going to put a representative rectangle inside a region. And if you picture the rectangle, if the rectangle is sitting on your axis of revolution and you picture the rectangle revolving around, it's either going to form a disk, okay, or if your re representative rectangle is not sitting on your axis revolution when you sketch the diagram, if the rectangle is not sitting on the axis, picture the rectangle revolving around the axis revolution here and it forms a washer. See the washer in there? Like what's in your toolkit at home? Um, nuts and bolts and washers, so it forms a washer. So we need a good sketch of the diagram and we're just going to put a representative rectangle perpendicular to our horizontal axis of revolution and we're going to figure out what shape it forms so we can determine whether it's going to be a disk application or a washer application. So um, you have capital R's and little r's in here. Capital R is going to be the outer radius. Capital R is going to always represent the distance from wherever the axis is to the far end of that represented rectangle that you need to draw. Your little radius, your inner radius, little r is your inner radius. That's going to represent from the axis of revolution to the near end of the representative rectangle. So it's the empty space that you need to subtract out, so you'll just have the volume of the solid. Let's take a look at example one. Function f is radical x, okay? And function g here, g is just gonna be the uh, x-axis, all right? So y equals zero. And we're gonna take this curve from one to four, so our bounds are given, so we can see how the, these, uh, this example works. So the first thing we wanna do is sketch the curve, okay? So we sketch the curve, so we're gonna draw the y-axis, we're gonna draw an x-axis, so we're here, so we draw the x and y axis. And um, if you can tell, I live near the airport and I'm in my backyard, so please pardon me, flying the, the airplanes are flying overhead, uh, just one after another today. So, okay, so um, we want to go ahead and graph the curve. So our square root of x curve, you know, starts at the origin. This is our square root of x curve right here. All right. And then uh, y equals zero, that is the x-axis, okay? And we want to go from one to four. So from x equals one, okay, so to x equals four, and so here is our region right here. So you can see what it's describing. It's given us the, the top piece, and it's given us the bottom piece, and then the left and the right. So we want to take this region right here, okay? So let me see if I can shade it in. And we want to take this region right here, okay? So there's our region right there, and we want to revolve this around the x-axis, all right? So we want to revolve this region right here about the x-axis. I'm gonna move that out of the way a little bit. This is what we have. So picture this, if you take this and revolve around the x-axis, can you picture the three-dimensional shape you're gonna have? So you picture this revolving, maybe it's gonna be the shape of a bowl or a solid bowl, something like that. And we want to find the volume of this solid that is generated. Inside of our shaded region, we need to draw a representative rectangle. Just somewhere in the middle of the shaded region, draw a representative rectangle. Always in the shaded region, always perpendicular to your horizontal axis of re revolution. So picture the rectangle revolving around our axis of revolution, and we want to determine, is it going to form a disk or is it going to form a washer? So remember, if your representative rectangle is sitting on the axis of revolution, it's going to be a disk. It's going to be a disk method. So because this rectangle is sitting on the axis, we're going to use disk method here. All right. So we're going to set up a disk method to compute this. All right. So we want to compute. So your bounding, you've got a pi up front, and you're going to integrate. Okay. And it's your big radius squared. Right. We're going to put our functions in there, but this is a little template for it. So, so and then even to back up the concept of um, in this 
be in another video, but um, so where does this formula even come from when you're computing the volume? You know, when you compute the area of an irregular shape, you're going to put infinitely many rectangles in the region. You're going to add up all the areas of the infinitely many rectangles. It's going to converge down to the area of the actual thing. Okay. Well, we want volume. You can't use an area of a rectangle when you're trying to develop the volume of a three-dimensional solid. So instead of using infinitely many areas of rectangles, we're using infinitely many volumes of cylinders. Okay. So what is the volume of a cylinder from a geometry class? Your volume of a cylinder is pi times the radius squared times the height, the thickness. All right. So these formulas are generated from volume of a cylinder from a geometry class, which is going to put infinitely many cylinders in here. We're going to add up all the volumes of the infinitely many cylinders, and it's going to give us the exact volume of the solid. So this is what we want to use. We want to use this disk method right here, which is just going to put infinitely many cylinders in our shaded region, and it's going to accumulate them so we can get the answer. So, um, and we don't need the extra piece to subtract out because like I said, disk method, when your representative rectangle is sitting on the axis of revolution, you only need, um, you only need the, um, uh, the one piece, okay? So it's just gonna be, it's sitting on the axis. So what do we put in here for our big radius, okay? So our big radius always goes from the axis of revolution to your representative rectangle. That's what your big radius is. When you're gonna go from the x-axis up to the function, your big radius is the function that it's going to, and it's going from zero up to radical x. And so radical x, this is what your big radius is, all right? And then finally, we need the bounds of integration. So the bounds of integration here are given to us. We can see the bounds of integration along the x-axis around the shaded region. That's what the bounds of integration. So for this problem, the bounds of integration are gonna be one to four because they're given to us, they're not always given to us, okay? So if they're not given to you, sometimes you actually have to compute the points of intersection uh, for the bounds of integration, but, you know, and we have more examples on the back side of the board, so you'll see when you're not given the, uh, the bounds of integration how to handle it. So here is what your disk uh, method setup looks like. Here's what the setup looks like. So let's go ahead and get this answer. You've probably done plenty of by hand integration before, so I want to utilize the graphing calculator. I'm going to use the Texas Instrument TI 89, and so uh, let's go ahead and use the TI 89, the on buttons in the lower left, right? And then it gives us all these icons on the screen, so I'm going to hit the home button. Home button brings me that home screen, and I want to put this equation in. So this equation has a pi up front, okay? So now I don't want to forget about the pi at the end, so my pi button over here under the clear, okay, but it's in blue, right? So you have to hit your second function and then hit that carrot key. It puts the pi, pi in here, and I'm going to multiply that by a definite integral. The definite integral, we have to go utilize the calculus menu, F3 button. The F3 button is where the calculus menu menu is, all right? And we're going to go down and choose number two under the calculus menu because we want to integrate. So choose number two, all right? And then we have to type in the parameters here. We have to type in the expression comma variable comma lower bound comma upper bound, okay? Four sets of parameters here. What is our expression? Well, it's going to be radical. Where's my radical sign here on top of the multiplication? So it's radical x, okay? So it's radical x, close the parenthesis on the radical, close it on the x, raised to the second power with respect to x from 1 to 4, and close those parentheses, okay? So I typed in pi, okay, times, then I hit the, uh, the F3 button, my calculus menu, chose number 2, integrate, all right? You type in the expression carefully, carefully, comma variable, comma lower bound, comma upper bound, hit enter, hit enter, and then it's, it's, it's your answer, but make sure you typed it in right, okay? So does our integral go from one to four? Um, and then we have the radical x quantity squared dx, yeah. Okay, with the pi up front, right? So what is the answer here? It's 15 pi over two. Okay, it's 15, 15 pi over two for the answer. And here's how disk method works. All right, so we're gonna see some washer methods on the back of the screen. So disk method, so you wanna sketch a region all right, sketch your region, a little loop-de-loop -loop on the axis you're revolving around, all right? Representative rectangle, your representative rectangle always goes perpendicular to the axis, perpendicular to the axis, all right? And so if your representative rectangle is sitting on the axis, then you're going to use just the disk method. You don't have any gaps in the middle to take away, all right? So when your representative rectangle is not sitting on the axis, you'll see that in the next example, then, yeah, then you're going to need to... Um, to actually set up the washer method, which is the two pieces, okay? So you have to remember this, because this is not on the back side of the board, and I'm gonna flip the board 
so we can do um, so we can do a couple more examples. All right. So let's take a look at the examples here on the backboard. All right, so examples on the backboard. So now we're going to use our function is x squared for the f function. Our g function is 4x minus x squared. We're going to revolve those fun that function around the x-axis, okay, and then around the line y equals negative 1 about the line y equals 6. We're going to do all three of these. So first thing we want to do here, we want to draw the graph. We have to draw, the, and we have to see what this graph looks like. So here's my y-axis, all right, here's my x-axis. And I need to see what these functions look like. Y equals x squared. That's a parabola that sits on the origin, opens up. Okay. F of x minus x squared. That's a parabola that opens down. Okay, it opens down. And let's see, the zeros are going to be at 0 and 4. So it opens down and it shifted over a little bit. What if you're not quite sure what that looked like? Okay, so we want to utilize technology here. So grab your T89. I'm going to clear out the home screen here. All right. So grab your T89. All right, and I'm still at the home screen. And let's go ahead and graph these functions. Okay, so how do you graph functions on a TI-89? Well, first of all, you gotta put the functions into the calculator. And to put the functions into the calculator, you wanna utilize that y equals. Okay, so y equals is up on top of the F1 key. So, but it's in the green color. So I have to hit my green diamond here, and then the y1, and I can put my functions in. So I want, for y1, I'm gonna put in x raised to the second power, hit enter to put it in. Okay, for y2, I'm going to type in 4x uh, minus x raised to the second power and hit enter. Okay, so y1 has the parabola that opens up x squared, and y2 has that parabola that opens down 4x minus x squared. You see it there. All right, now we want to come up with a decent window maybe so you can see what the graph looks like. Well, if you're not quite sure what to use for a window, all right, you can always use the built-in features. You have a zoom button, F2, it says zoom up, up top. F2, it says up top. If you choose F2, it's a zoom. So you can choose F2. Those are the built-in uh, windows to your calculator, all right? So one of the very common ones is number six, the zoom standard, choose number. So you can scroll down to the number six, okay? So zoom standard, you can, or you can just choose number six, hit enter. And that gives you a negative 10 to 10 on the X and a negative 10 to 10 on the Y. All right, and so and that and there's your so we want to the volume of this piece over here is way over here, okay, and that's kind of hard to see because it's way over there, so it's in the first quadrant, and so maybe we want to adjust the window, all right, so maybe we want to adjust the window, um, so we don't have so many uh, negative x's, we don't need all those negative y's, all right, so there's a way to adjust the window, and you can see on top of the F2 it says window, so if you hit your green diamond button, hit that F2. Okay, all right, you can put your own window in. You can see right there that it's negative 10 to 10 for the X min X max and the Y min Y max negative 10 to 10. But maybe instead of negative 10 to 10, we didn't need all those negative X's. Maybe we want to go negative 5 hit enter to 5 hit enter. Okay, all right, and then move down to Y min. Maybe we want to go negative 5 hit enter to 5 hit enter. All right, so I'm changing my window. This is not one of the built-ins. Okay, so sometimes you just need to change the windows so you can get a bit better picture. All right, and then you F3, the so green diamond, hit your F3 button. All right, so when you're graphing on the TI-89, you want green diamond F1, put the functions in, right? Green diamond F2, set up a window so you can see the graph, so you can see what you're doing. And then green diamond F3, and there's your graph. Okay, so there's what the graph looks like. We're going to go ahead and sketch that. Um, so we just want the overlap, the um, overlap, the shaded overlapping region. All right, so we want the parabola that opens up. Okay, so the y equals x squared is the parabola that opens up. Okay, all right, and then we want the parabola that opens down. The 4x minus x squared is the one that opens down. So pretty much this is what it looks like. I'll just, so we only need that in the first quadrant. All right because we need the overlapping region, it's right here. Here's the overlapping region. And we want to take this for part A, we want to revolve this around the x-axis. So I'll put a loop-de-loop -loop on the x-axis. We want to revolve around the x-axis, okay? All right, and then you put your representative rectangle goes inside the shaded region perpendicular to the axis of revolution. So just draw it up and down, okay? Because all our axes today are horizontal, all right? Now, picture, this rectangle, all right? So you got the curves in there. You got the parabola that opens up, you got the parabola that opens down, and you see the overlapping shaded today, all right? 
we want to revolve around the x-axis. About the x-axis, representative rectangle goes inside the shaded region. Picture the rectangle going around the x-axis. Is this going to form a disc or is it going to form a washer? Well, that rectangle is not sitting on the axis of revolution. It's not sitting on there. There's a gap in the middle. So we've got a washer method here. Right? And if you can remember from the other side of the board, your washer method, what does that look like? It's got a pi up front, and you're going to set up a definite integral. It's your big radius squared minus, and then your little radius squared. Okay, and all that's in terms of x. Big radius squared minus little radius squared. Okay, now what do we put in for the big radius, little radius? Your big radius is always your distance. It's the outer radius, right? It's the distance from the axis of revolution to the far end of the representative rectangle. That's what your big radius is. So you have to figure out the big radius. So what is the big radius going to be? You're going from the axis to the far end of the representative rectangle to the outer radius, okay? So this is going to be, let's see, it goes from the x-axis to the parabola that opens down. Anytime you go from the x-axis to a function, it's the function you're going to. So the x-axis to the parabola opens down, so 4x minus x squared, if I gave myself enough space to write in there. And that's your big radius. All right, big radius goes from the axis of Anytime you go from the x-axis to the function, it's the function you're going to, right? What about the little radius? Little radius goes from the uh, axis of revolution to the near end of the representative rectangle, all right? So what is the little radius going to be? Well, it goes from the x-axis to the near end of the representative rectangle. It goes to the parabola that opens up, all right? So the parabola that opens up, so it's going to be x squared. So there's your little radius. All right, what about the bounds of integration? Well, the bounds of integration are going to be, it's not given to us. So when they're not given to you, the bounds of integration are going to be the x-coordinates of the points of intersection, okay? So to get the bounds of integration, we need to get the x-coordinates of the points of intersection, and to do that, you would set those functions equal to each other. We would, I'll write it over here, so we will take x squared and set it equal to 4x minus x squared. We set the curves equal to each other. This is a quadratic, so to solve a quadratic, we need to move all the terms to the left, so you're going to add x squared to both sides. Subtract 4x, you got a 0 on the right, and then factor, so 2x quantity x minus 2, because you can factor a 2x out of each of the terms. When is this expression equal to 0? When x is 0, when x is 2. So if they don't give you, if they don't give you um, your bounds of integration, then your bounds of integration will be the x-coordinates of the points of intersection. So we're going to integrate from 0 to 2. So we're going to integrate from 0 to 2. All right. And here is our equation. All right, so here's the equation completely set up. So now we we'll want to figure out what the volume of this solid is. So we're going to use our technology to do that. All right, but just really quick of a review. You start by sketching the curves. So we sketch the parabola opens up, the parabola opens down, shade the region in between because it's, it generates a closed region. All right, we're going to take this and we're, this little looks like a leaf or something. We're going to revolve it around the x-axis to form a solid. We want the volume of that solid. So to find the volume of that solid, you got to figure out disk or wash your method. Well, because we have, when you take your representative rectangle inside that shaded region, because um, that rectangle is not sitting on the axis, it's going to be a washer method, okay? Because that rectangle revolving around the axis forms that hole in the middle, all right? Big radius always goes from axis to the far end of the rectangle. Little radius goes from the axis to the near end of the rectangle. Let's get our answer. Okay, so let's get our answer. So we'll do this on the calculator, but be very careful when you type it in. All right, so back to the TI-89. Um, I'm still on the graph, so hit the home, home button, home button, and then numeric integration. So we are doing calculus, numeric integration. We go to F3 on the TI-89 is your calculus menu. We're going to choose number two. Number two is the integration. All right, so choose number two. Oh, be careful when you type in this, it's the, uh, the integrand here. So parenthesis, and it's 4x minus x raised to the second power. And we're going to close the parenthesis and square that quantity, right? Minus, and then the other quantity is in parenthesis, x raised to the second power, close parenthesis, square that quantity, okay? And then we want to integrate that with respect to x, comma, x, comma, lower bound is 0, upper bound is 2, close parenthesis. And that's it typed in. Okay, let's make sure we did it right. So I'm going to hit enter. All right. 
And so I hit enter and I need to take that answer and multiply it by pi. Okay, so I need to remember to multiply that pi by pi because I didn't put my pi up front. You could, if you want to, put your pi up front. Okay, so if I go back down to my, you could at the very, you could if you want to, and I'll, I'll do this when I type in the next one. We could put pi up front and multiply it so we don't forget it. Okay, so I went back to the very beginning and I multiplied by pi. And I'll make sure with the letter B and letter C that I put the pi up front for you so you remember. So we got the pi up front, okay, and then we've got the integral. The integral goes from 0 to 2. You can see the big radius in there squared. You can see the little radius squared. So, and then with respect to x. So you just want to check that pretty print and make sure all the features are there that you need before you take the answer. What does it say the answer? So we got 32 pi over 3 for the answer. All right, so let's go ahead and write that down. We'll get on to part B and part C. 32 pi over 3. So here's the answer to part A. All right. Part B. Part B, we have the same exact base, but we're going to change up our line of the, the revolution line. Okay? So we're going to change that around a little bit. So we draw the diagram again. We're just going to have to keep drawing this uh, diagram. So here's my y axis and here's my x axis. So we have the parabola that opens up, right? And we have that parabola that opens down. Okay, and so here is our shaded region right there. All right, parabola it opens up, parabola it opens down. All right, we want to revolve this around the line y equals negative one. Okay, so this is y equals negative one. Loop de loop goes on the line y equals negative one. Puts your representative rectangle up and down inside this region. Picture the rectangle, picture this rectangle revolving around y equals negative one. Okay, disc or washer disc or washer. Well, if your representative rectangle is sitting on the line revolution, it's a disc method, okay? But it's not sitting on the line revolution. Picture this rectangle revolving around the line revolution. Your line revolution is here and your rectangle is up there. So when you revolve the rectangle around the line revolution, it's definitely going to form that washer, okay? So we're dealing with a washer method where we're going to take the volume of the cell, but we have to subtract out the empty space in the middle, okay? So this is why the, it's referred to as a washer method. So we definitely want to set up a washer method for this. Washer method here. So your washer method, and I usually set the template up for myself. What does washer method look like? There's a pi up front, okay? And we're going to set up a definite integral, and it's your big radius squared, all right, minus your little radius squared. All right, so big radius squared minus your little radius squared. All right, so now what is your big radius? Well, your big radius always goes from the axis of revolution to the far end of your representative rectangle. There's the big radius. Now look at the diagram. Let's figure out what this is. It goes from the x. Uh, it goes from the axis of revolution to the far end of the representative rectangle, right? Anytime we go from the x-axis to the function, it's just the function you're going to. So we know from the x-axis, x-axis to this parabola that opens down, it's going to be 4x minus x squared. But we want to go from this line. So how far is this? Well, we have to go one unit to get to the x-axis, and then we got to go to that parabola that opens down. So this is going to be 1 plus 4x minus x squared, right? So this is going to be 1 and then plus 4x minus x squared. Okay, I didn't give myself a lot of room there, but so this is what your big radius is. The big radius is the distance from the axis of revolution to the far end of your representative rectangle. So draw yourself a good diagram so you can see it. So it's going to be 1 plus 4x minus x squared. All right, your little radius always goes from the axis of revolution to the near end of your representative rectangle. That's your little radius. It's the empty space in the middle that we have to subtract out. So what's your little radius? Remember that any time you go x-axis to a function, it's the function you're going to. x-axis to here, that's the parabola opens up, that's x squared. So we want to go here all the way up to here. So you've got to go 1 plus x squared, right? So this is x squared. From the x-axis to the curve is x squared, but we got to go that much more. So this is 1 plus x squared for this piece. So 1 plus x squared for this piece here, okay? All right, and then finally, the bounds of integration. Well, the bounds of integration will always be the points of intersection, and we've already computed that over here, so the bounds of integration are going to be 0 to 2. We've already computed the bounds of integration. All right, so here is your definite integral that will find the volume of this solid. Okay, you have a different shape because you have a different line that you're revolving around, so 
back to the graphing calculator and let's go ahead and type this in. I'm gonna clear out the last problem. All right, so I'm gonna clear out the last problem. All right, so back to our home screen. Now, you know, let's type in pi first. There is a pi up front. All right, so pi times, because when you're dealing with the disk and washer method, there's a pi up front, so put the pi there. All right, so you have the pi up front. So, and then you're going to just um, run. All right, and multiply that by, all right, we want to hit F3 and choose number two. We're going to type in a definite integral and ooh, be careful, okay, carefully, carefully. So what do we have for our big radius? Our big radius in parentheses, it's one plus, okay, um, four X minus x raised to the second power and that quantity is squared and then subtract from that our little radius our little radius parentheses which is one plus x raised to the second power that quantity is also raised to the second power we want to integrate this with respect to x from zero comma to two and then close your parentheses okay and then you hit enter all right, and you want to make sure before you take the answer that it's typed in exactly the way you intended to type it in. You have a pi up front, the pi is up front, and you're going to integrate from zero to two. Your big radius squared, which was you had to go from the axis revolution, you had to go one plus the curve. You had to go one to get to the x-axis and then plus the curve, minus, and then your little radius squared. Little radius squared was one plus the parabola squared with respect to x and so and then just so if you got it typed in right take our answer it says 16 pi so 16 pi for this answer so this answer right here is 16 pi and there you go okay so there's this answer all right and let's do one more part one more part okay so we're going to take the same exact f of x is x squared g of x is 4x minus x squared same exact um and we're going to revolve this around y equals six. So let's take a look at this. So let's sketch it first. Okay, so we're gonna sketch, here's the y-axis, here's the x-axis. We're gonna draw the parabola it opens up, parabola it opens down. Here's our shaded region. Okay, so we pretty much already determined that, all right? And so we want to revolve this y equals six. Well, that's gonna be way up here above. My, this is way up here, okay? This is y equals six, loop-de-loop. -loop y equals six, representative rectangle always goes inside, shaded region up and down. Picture the rectangle revolving around y equals six. Is it gonna form a disc or is it gonna form a washer? Well, if the rectangle, rectangle is sitting on the axis, right? If it's attached to the axis, it's a disc. Otherwise, it's a washer. So this is not attached, so this is gonna form a washer. So this is another washer method, all right? So washer method, so this washer method, let's set up a little template for this washer method. So you've got the pi up front, okay? So you're gonna integrate your big radius squared minus your little radius squared, okay? So your big radius, let's take a look. Your big radius goes from the axis of revolution to the far end of your representative rectangle. There's your big radius. We gotta figure out what this is in terms of the functions. What is this big radius? Well, let's see. It's gonna, we want the, what's in green there. So you take the whole thing is six. The distance from the x-axis, the whole thing, you're gonna take six, and you're gonna take away that piece right there, you're gonna take away the x squared, okay? We want the green left over. So you're gonna take the whole, and you're gonna take away that empty space, you'll have the cell left over. Six take away x squared, x squared, because that's what the, from the x-axis up to the curve. So it's gonna be six, take away x squared, okay? So your big radius is gonna be six minus x squared. That's your big radius, okay? And I'm going to move this over a little bit, okay? So what do we wanna do with that big radius? Well, we wanna square that, all right? And then we, now we wanna subtract from that our little radius squared, and our little radius squared goes from the axis of revolution to the near end of your representative rectangle. That's gonna be your little radius, okay? So what is our little radius gonna be? Well, I'll take the whole thing six, and we're gonna take away all of this, which is from the x-axis to the problem that opens down. So it's gonna be six minus the quantity four x minus x squared. So six minus, don't forget grouping symbols, four x minus x squared. Okay, and so here is the setup. There's your integrand, okay? Big radius always goes from the axis of revolution to the far end of the rectangle. Little radius goes from the axis to the near end, all right? 
bounds of integration, bounds of integration along the x axis around the shaded region. If they don't give you the bounds of integration, then they are the x coordinates of the points of intersection that we've already found. Okay? So here is your setup for this problem. Here's the setup, and we need to very carefully type this in the graphing calculator. Let's see this one. All right. So let's go ahead and type this in. Okay, so I'm going to clear out the last problem. And um, at the graphing calculator here, we have a pi up front. Let's put it there so we don't forget about it because we have so much to type in. All right, pi up front. And then we want to type in F3, okay, um, and choose number two because we want to type in an integral. All right, our big radius, our big radius is going to be the quantity of parentheses six minus x raised to the second power. Close that quantity and square it. Okay, minus, now the little radius in parentheses is going to be six minus the quantity, another parenthesis, four x minus x raised to the second. Okay, close parenthesis on that quantity, close parenthesis on that whole trinomial, raise that to the second power. We want to integrate that with respect to x from zero to two, close parenthesis, and then hit enter and see. So you make sure you typed it in right. I never take the answer until I read what I typed in. So I have pi up front. 0 to 2, especially these tougher ones, okay? And it's if you can't see it all, you go up and highlight it so you see that big radius, 6 minus x squared, you see it there, okay? Minus, the little radius goes off the screen, so just highlight and arrow over so you can see the rest of it, okay? And then you'll be able to see the rest of it to make sure you typed it in right. And as long as you typed it in right, what are we saying the answer is? 64 pi over 3, okay? So this answer here... And 64 pi over 3, and there's your answer, okay? So here's examples of your washer method, and if you notice what we did, we did an x-axis, okay? And then I put your horizontal line below the region, so you can see how it would work when you set it up below the region, okay, below the x-axis region, and then we set it up, um, put your axis above, above the region, okay? So wherever your horizontal line is, okay, so how you got to choose between disk and washer, Put your representative rectangle inside the shaded region. If the rectangle is sitting on the axis of revolution, it's a disk method. If your rectangle is not sitting on the axis of revolution, it's a washer method because it, two pieces, washer method, two pieces, you can subtract out the empty space. Okay, so uh, once you determine which method you have, you know, your big radius always goes from the axis to the far end of the rectangle always goes from the axis to the far end of the rectangle. Your big radius always goes from the axis to the far end of your represented rectangle. And just figure out in terms of the functions what that is, okay? Your little radius always goes from the axis of revolution to the near end of the rectangle, okay? From the axis of revolution to the near end of the rectangle, the empty space. From the axis of revolution to the near end of the rectangle, okay? It's the empty space in the middle that you want to subtract out, okay? And then once you get it set up, you know, grab your technology and be super careful typing it in, okay, with all the pieces squared, so it's quantity squared minus quantity squared. So be very careful, okay? Whew, hope this one helps. So um, best wishes to all of you. Thank you for watching.